Good afternoon and welcome to the final group game of this Group A in the Western Region Asian Cricket Council T20 Asia Cup qualifier. We're on the road to the Asia Cup 2020. And Qatar are in pole position. They've taken two big wins. Oh man, snapping at their heels behind them, but behind them by a big margin on net run rate. And what that means is that Bahrain must win. Bahrain lose today to Qatar. They are out. They're going to be looking to upset their higher ranked rivals. Andrew Leonard here in the commentary box. I'll be with you all throughout the afternoon. Bringing you every ball of this final Group A game. Eight teams here this week. And we've seen a Qatar side that have been so impressive. 23rd in the world coming into the tournament. They've been first class. Let's take a look at the two squads. And the two plain 11s. Qatar just keeps seeming to pick the same team. Same side for the three days back to back. That's the way they like to do it. Really enjoyed having our head coach in the commentary box with us yesterday, Shahid Maboud. Our manager, Gul Khan. So the same team. And the good news is Cameron Khan has been passed fit. He went to hospital just to have that concussion scan, but he's been given the all clear. One change for Bahrain. And a lovely moment. Imran Javid, who's bowling his left arm quick off slightly the wrong foot. A little bit like Sohel Tanvir, but he gets a real pace up, and he was too quick yesterday for the Maldives. So Bahrain, in this must-win clash, will bowl first. Qatar won the toss and decided to bat. Three tosses, one in a row. And what that means is they're going to stick to the same formula. And that formula has been built around the brilliance of Cameron Khan. What a tournament he's having. 88 in the first game, 60 odd yesterday, back to back T20 international 50s. Nicely bowled outside the off stump. He's a lovely rhythm. Definitely a little bit off the wrong foot, the action, but there's nothing wrong with that. The unconventional you see in T20 cricket these days can be so effective. Beauty. Really good stuff this from Imran Javid. Myself and Barney Reid are going to sit down together and pick a team of the tournament at the end of this Asian Cricket Council Western Region. Asia Cup T20 qualifier. And one of my first names on the team sheet could well be Imran Javid. So impressive. His left arm seam. Beautifully bowled, really good outside the off stump, and it's another dot ball. So good pressure from Bahrain on Qatar. They are up for today, to say the least. It's just over in the presentation as Mohamed Samir Fayez was given his T20i cap. So focused, this Bahrain team. Coached by the former first-class cricketer in Pakistan, Azim ul -Haq. It's a beauty. Brilliant first over. First class bowling that. Just the single run from it. Qatar after the first over. Just one for them.
So top of the bowling from this, the pavilion end, Imran Masood, but no great pace to Imran Masood, but, but my God, does he get the ball to talk. There's been a lot of talk about the cricket balls that we've been using in this Asian Cricket Council event, not the perhaps most commonly used kookaburra white balls that are used the top, very top level of the game, but a slightly different ball in both Oman and the UAE saying just a little bit of getting used to, but this man with the new ball in his hand, wait till it's see how much he gets it to move, big appeal, perhaps just going over the top, no it's not, it's been given, he took his time, the standing umpire, Anantha Kumar, at this the pavilion end, but it certainly looked adjacent, and that's going to bring about the first wicket. What a big moment in the match that is. Zahiruddin, first delivery. Remember, Sood, but look at this. Was it too high? Let's find out. No, I think that's a good decision. It's trapped him on the back pad. It was a big appeal. And the umpire waited and waited and finally gave it out. So that's the first wicket. Bahrain looking to really cause another upset. We had a big upset yesterday. Qatar beat Oman. And the home side Oman could be in trouble now. Remember if Bahrain win this game and win it by enough, they'll go past Oman and relegate them into third place. What a turn up for the books that would be. We're going to see the Oh man, so I'd watching nervously this afternoon. They'll have the YouTube out. They'll be watching every ball. Mohammed Nadim walking past us here in the commentary position. He's already got the phone out, logging on to the Asian Cricket Council on YouTube. That's a wide ball, and that is not the regulation delivery for Imran Masood, but he usually bowls big in-duckers. Big, massive hooping in-swingers, but that one goes away with the arm and too wide outside the off-stump. The new man to the crease, Mohamed Tanvir. And these are the two key men with the bat for Qatar. Been so impressive so far in this tournament. Yeah, there's the in-swinger. Really good. As I said, no great pace. Probably operating somewhere in the, the mid-60s. Just ambles in of a short run-up. So effective. He bowled his four overs yesterday straight the way through. Again, something you don't see too often in a T20 international. Yeah, what a start this is from Bahrain. They had a significant period before the match, about 10 to 15 minutes. They were in the changing room as a group all sitting together discussing their plans and the head coach Azim al -Haq, was really going through the detailed plans that they have for this match. Down the track, that one's going to be signalled wide again, just looking for the outswing at that time and swinging too much. Powered into the sky. This could be a chance for the second wicket. Nestles underneath it. Safraz Ali juggles it and takes the catch. Bahrain are a buzz. They found two wickets in the first two overs. And this tournament, the Asian Cricket Council, Western Region T20, continues to surprise. Ahmed Tanvir so devastating the opening match against the Maldives. He's gone without scoring. That one just held its line. It didn't come in perhaps as much as Mohamed Tanvir was thinking and all he could do was chip it up in the air to Safraz Ali who takes the catch. What is going on here? Our old man on the brink of going out all of a sudden. New man to the crease now. For Qatar, Imal Malindu Galianga to give him his full title. 
one of the two Sri Lankan origin players in this Qatar side. This is a Qatar side that absolutely dominated from ball one against Oman yesterday. Made 175 with the bat. The only thing they really did wrong yesterday was drop some catches. They put down five. Five dropped catches for Qatar yesterday. And this Bahrain side, ranked 52nd in the world, have the 23rd ranked Qatar in all sorts of bother. Going to be the first runs off the bat in this over. And it's worked down to third man. So going to need to rebuild here, Qatar. But they've got the four man. Cameron Can, the leading run scorer in the tournament at the moment. Back to back T20 I-50s. It was... Cameron Khan on strike you worked it for his first runs down to third man. It's the left hander now at the crease. Imal Lianga. What a start from Imran Masood, but two wickets in the over. Left alone outside the off stump. What an over. Two wickets from Imam Masood, but after two overs, Qatar four for two, and in a spot of bother. Down the leg side, and how's that one missed? He's walked across his stumps, Cameron Can, trying to play it into the leg side, and he's nearly exposed his stumps and being clean bowled. All happening here at the Oman Cricket Academy. We've got some very nervous Oman players watching on because they know if Bahrain take a big win, they could be out. Not going to be in their fate anymore. Three teams would be trapped together on four points each with two wins each. I just watched back the replay of that Cameron can delivery. It went right over the top of middle stump. His left armor, Imran Javid, is an outstanding bowler. Gets it down a good pace, definitely in and around 80 miles an hour. And the shout from the sideline comes one more wicket. Qatar need to get themselves back into this game. Remember, Qatar won the toss and chose to bat first. So who would have thought it coming into the final group game of this Asian Cricket Council Western Region T20 qualifier we have three sides and all of their fates currently hang in the balance. The only side that's certain to be through this weekend right now is the UAE. Three from three in Group B. Brilliant bowling. Back of a length, real rise off that back of a length. A good decision from Cameron Khan to leave that alone outside the off stump. But look at this. Look at the energy from Bahrain. Every ball being cheered, every dot. Full of enthusiasm. Standing umpire there at the far end. Afsal Sheer Khan from Oman. Just trying to get a little bit of control back. Bahrain not shouldn't be allowed to be get 
too over-enthusiastic. And the umpires are just telling the slip fielder and the point fielder, you don't need to come up and have a word with the batsman after a dot ball. This is super stuff. Five consecutive dots. He's bowled 11 deliveries, just one run off his bowling so far. Just shows the depth of cricket, not just in associate cricket, but also specifically in the Asian Cricket Council region and this Gulf region. Eight sides here battling it out. They're ranked all the way from 15th in the world down to 74th, but there hasn't been many easy games this week. Super over. One of the most outstanding overs of the tournament that it's a maiden. No wickets for Imran Javid, but he easily could have had when he was bowling to the leading run scorer in the tournament. He's finished with a maiden. Three overs gone. Qatar not getting going. They're four for two. So there's the points tables on your screen of both Group A and Group B. So as I was just saying a few moments ago, the UAE, the only side guaranteed to be through to the semi-finals at the moment. Obviously, Qatar, with their massive net run rate advantage, should be in a good position. But if Bahrain can inflict a defeat on Qatar, their first defeat of the tournament, it would put three teams on two points and everything would come down to net run rate. None of those sides is guaranteed to be through. If Bahrain inflicted a really heavy defeat in Qatar, Qatar could even slip into third. Awful lot of cricket to be played this afternoon. We're going to bring you every ball. It's going to play out over the next couple of hours here. In fairly thrilling circumstances, I suspect. Who is going to take these two spots in Group A? Oh man, have done all they can do for the moment. They've taken two wins. But perhaps not with the net run rate that Dooley Mendes would have liked the head coach. Some nervy moments for supporters of all three countries. Wide ball, really good take down the leg side from the keeper. That's Imran Ali, but taking the ball from the wicket, or sorry, the bowler, Imran Masood, but the two namesakes, the two butts in this Bahrain lineup. You can see with the extravagant movement that Imran Masood but generates with this new ball, not just in swingers, he also does find the outswinger. That time into the legs, and finally, Liang is going to get off the mark. We've got Bilal Khan walking past me here. The big, tall, oh man, quick. He was saying to me during the break, two for 15, that's just regulation for me. And the figures I'm used to, both brilliantly earlier on. Powered into the sky, and we're going to finally see some relief for Qatar and some runs start to come. Just hit into the offside for a couple. The track thuds into the thigh pad. And Cameron Khan, the tournament's leading run scorer, is struggling to get the ball away. 
I know there's some special bowling going on, so really good stuff. Come in there on Javid. Although Imran Masood but has taken the two wickets, Imran Javid arguably the more impressive. Really good bowling, squares him up. This is super stuff from Bahrain. Four overs gone. It's eight for two, and we've seen a lot of high scores this week. Qatar in trouble. They're going to continue with Imran Javid. Probably save back one over for him later at the death. But he's been so impressive. Lovely bowling. Sharbash, Sharbash, the shout from the sidelines. And no surprise, I have to agree with Mahadudin down here in front of our commentary position. Big appeal, but surely sliding down the leg side. Wait for the signal. And signaled leg by by the umpire Afsal Shir Khan. He's from the local Oman cricket board. And then Ananta Kumar, currently at square leg, looking across your screens now. The third umpire today, Ananta Kumar also from Oman. The third umpire today is Imran Mustafa Haji from Kuwait. down the ground. Still can't find the boundary, Qatar. A bit over pitch that time from Imran Javid, turned into a long half volley. Huge appeal. Again, probably just going down the leg side. The natural angle of the left armour as well. Just veering down into the pads. And now Lianga was looking to whip that one into the leg side. Picking up any contact from the umpire. Not for the first time this over is unmoved again. Clearly going down the leg side. Brilliant bowling this. Really good stuff. Just the one run off the bat. He's bowled three overs, none for two. I'm saying to Barney, need my colleague who's commentating over on the other ground. 
for me he's been the most outstanding bowler of the tournament and, and I've taken the four or five wicket holds but in T20 cricket that doesn't always indicate who the best bowlers are Imran Javid of Bahrain has got a real gem in their hands Short ball, and we're finally going to have the first boundary. Felt like an age, this power play. Probably the lowest power player of the whole tournament. No matter what happens, this over. But finally, in the sixth over, the first ball of the sixth over. And a short ball. And it's put away by Cameron Khan, the leading run scorer in the tournament. He's walked across his stumps, picked it up off his hip. His fine leg in the circle. As soon as he beat the man, it was always going to be four runs. Very welcome along if you're just joining us for the first time today. Some of the biggest numbers we've had all week. Two and a half thousand people concurrently watching us right now. You're very welcome. Andrew Leonard here in the commentary box. I'm sure the reason the numbers are so big is they scamper through for a quick single. Because this game is massive, not just for Qatar and Bahrain, but also for Oman, the hosts. Remember, Oman were the most fancied of the eight sides here. And not just qualify, but probably go on and win the tournament. But they're currently in a position where their fate does not rest in their hands. Bahrain can take a victory here over Qatar. It's going to come down to net run rate between those three sides. And this really tight, outstanding start from the two opening bowlers for Bahrain is. Putting no man's fate in the mix. This is their net run rate. Right around one and over. Bahrain's about plus 0.5. So you'd have to get the calculators out. But if Bahrain were to take something in the region of a 20 and a 30 run win, and because they're going to be chasing, of course, if they were to chase it down with perhaps three or four overs, maybe five overs to spare, they should go past Oman's net run rate. Of course, then you've got to put into the mix the fact that Qatar's net run rate will drop down significantly as well. So we'll wait for the calculators to do their work later on. I'll try and give you some estimates on those totals at the halfway stage, perhaps. Tucked into the leg side, going to be the second boundary. This time, the first one to the left-hander. Took the aerial route, and for just half a moment, Imran Javid at square leg thought he was in action. Good body in the second boundary of the over. Here's the replay on your screen, and you can see Imran Masood put just strain onto the pads. He went for the outswinger to the right-hander, which is an in-swinger to the left-hander. And as soon as it beats the infield here, at either of the two grounds at the Oman Cricket Academy, you're generally always going to get four. Good value for your shots here, and good cricket wickets. Just the solitary delivery remains of the power play and kind of access to all 12 games right in front of me. But I think this is going to be the lowest score of the completed power play. And a finish with a mix up. Direct hit would have been out. The throw came in to the non striker's end, and Cameron Khan would have been gone with a direct hit. And what was already a brilliant power play for Bahrain could have been even better. Take a look at the replay, but I'm certain that the throw that came in from Safraz Ali at mid-on, if that had hit, 
Cameron Can, the leading run scorer, would have been caught short. He wanted the single. He's cleanly picked up. The throw comes in. And you can see clearly on your screen there, he's gone for all money. Run out by three or four yards with a direct hit. That would have been a huge moment in the match. So we're going to see that first change in bowling, as I thought. And then Javid will hold one of his overs back to the deck. I think he just runs in his two overs so far. Can they are in trouble here. They had a big win yesterday. Qatar, they beat Oman by 34 runs. All of a sudden, it looks like a different pitch we're playing on from earlier on. Maldives batted really well before Oman chased it down in the morning. Safraz Ali into the attack with his right arm medium. And as things stand at the moment, we have to put Bahrain right on top in this match. Just back to the square, just be a single for Cameron Khan. And all the batsmen really able to get the Scoreboard ticking at the moment. Cameron Khan, 10 of 20 deliveries, strike rate of just 50. Going to be down the leg side of the left hander, signaled wide. Now this guitar innings really failing to get going, but good running. Junaid Aziz was. Kick to the ball, the leg spinning all round her, but even though he picked it up one handed and got the throw in, plenty of time to get back for two. And just wonder at the moment what's going through the two Qatar batsmen's head. Current run rate just 3.3 .3 and over. They start to try and press the scoring on. Timing there, and immediately Cameron Khan sends him back. Bahrain so up for today. Remember, if Bahrain lose, they are out. The equation is that simple. However, if they win, things get an awful lot more complicated. And they end up with three teams tied on four points apiece with two wins each. And it's all going to come down to net run rate. And we need to have the statisticians get the calculators out. And work out the conundrums and the permutations. Off the top of my head, I suspect something like a win for Bahrain chasing down this score with three or four overs to spare should send them past Oman's net run rate. I'll get that check for you though. Beautifully bowled, really good Yorker. Not too sure what they're appealing for, particularly the fielder at point. Closes out a good tight first over from Safraz Ali. The end of seven overs, scorecard remarkably reads 25 for two.
there have been consecutive changes of the in the bowling attack. We still will not see seam, we'll not see spin, we'll see Anderson Khan bring himself into the attack, the captain. and can into the attack and bring it all together too often you see a ball left alone in the eighth over of a T20 international but it's just how muddled the thinking is for Qatar right now they've been shell-shocked shell-shocked by a brilliant opening spell from both Imran Javed and Imran Masood but even though it was Imran Masood but that took the wickets Imran Javed spell so impressive a left arm seamer Are just not coming at the moment for Qatar. He means getting away from them in a hurry. Singles aren't going to hurt Bahrain, and they won't mind that at all. Just two boundaries so far in this Qatar lineup. Remember, this is the Qatar batting lineup that was rampant earlier in the week. They had 196 for four at this ground against the Maldives. But it has been a highly impressive 175 for five against Oman, and it could have been more against Oman. Remember there, star batsman Cameron Khan took a Nasty blow to the side of the head from a really sharp bouncer from Mohammed Nadim. Just to show T20 international cricket, there's no easy games anymore. Both sides playing for their countries, playing for their futures. Nasty bowl, that one just getting up a bit off a of length. Getting into the gloves of Cameron Khan. Wind are just not coming here at the moment. over remarkably. And a misfield. Only half a stop will allow them to get back to two. Fires Amadou dies over the ball. A bit of a London Bridge effect. Really good bowling, surely too high, big appeal. Yeah, definitely going over the top, that one. Maybe a question of a little bit of bat involved as well. Let's take a look at the batting card so far. And it's a tale of woe, really, for the... Tale of woe, really, for all the Qatari fans, because nobody's been able to get going. Zaharuddin fell for one. Tanvir Muhammad, who was so devastating here in the opening game of the tournament. He had a third ball duck. Cameron Khan, 12. But look at the strike rates. Really struggling. 12 off 24 deliveries. And Imal Lianga also striking it. Just one run every two deliveries. And these are the outstanding bowling figures. Look at that. Three overs, one made, and none for two. Inman Rasood Butts taking the wickets, but Javed the star for me. And Safraz Ali, and now the captain, Anison Khan, have started well. 
Let's see Safra's Ali continue. From the Al Emirate end, just veers down the leg side and the arms from the umpire are outstretched to signal wide. Beautifully bold. Playing a miss. Lianga's struggles continue. Just going to give you a quick score update from across the way where Iran are playing Kuwait. Group B should be a bit more simple. If Kuwait win, it's pretty regulation. UAE, take, UAE will take top of the table with three wins, with Kuwait in second. Saudi and Iran bringing up the rear. Another play and a miss here. But if Iran can win... Then we'll have three teams in Group B, all with one win each. And it will come down to net run rate, although Kuwait in a significantly superior position there. Bold him. That ends Imal Lianga's struggles. Cleaned him up comprehensively. Safraz Ali has knocked over the left-hander and put Qatar... Into a real spot of bother, a further spot of bother, I suppose. Let's take a look at the replay. Coming right arm around the wicket with his slingy action. Safrazali has cleaned up the left-hander comprehensively. Actually a beautiful Yorker. Played right over the top of the ball. Imal Lianga. Whippy round arm action causing Liang all sorts of problems, but for Qatar it might not be the worst thing because Imal Liang was really struggling. So Mohamed Rizlan in at number five for Qatar. If you're just tuning in for the first time, those graphics at the bottom of your screen are correct. Qatar 29 for three, coming off what I described as the most famous day in their short cricketing history, Qatar, yesterday. They knocked over one of the foremost associates in world cricket in the shape of Oman. But right now, the fate of Oman is very much lying in the hands of this Qatar Bahrain match. Oman have just left the ground, gone back to the team hotel. They'll have the YouTube on the smart TVs in the hotel room, or maybe in the on their mobile phones or the tablets, those with the iPads back in the hotel, who knows. But they'll certainly be on the Asian Cricket Council YouTube page watching every ball of this. And the reason they'll be watching it I'll just bring you back those pictures in one moment. Describe to you what happens this ball. A nice drive to extra cover where it's well fielded. We'll just get that patched up for you. Bear with us. So we are back now. Sorry for the brief delay. Slower ball down the leg side will be signalled wide. So it is not the end of the over, as we say at the bottom of the screen because that is going to be a wide we'll get those graphics corrected 30 for 3 the score now one ball to go played a missed outside the off stump great over Safraz Ali playing a blinder with the ball for Bahrain as well so 9 overs gone the score is now 30 for 3 
Powered into the leg side, and finally Cameron Khan has broken the shackles. And he's broken it with a maximum. Right into the slot from Anison Khan. And I think Cameron Khan has decided enough is enough. Need to press the accelerator button. That's the first six of the innings. No great pace, Anison Khan. So if he does bowl it into a hitting slot length like he did here. Should be easy for Cameron Khan to access the leg side, and he's done that. Back live with you now. Cut away. It's going to be a single. It's just the third boundary of the entire innings, though. That's six from Cameron Khan. Great comeback from Anasim Khan, but good batting as well. Dug out the good Yorker. Gets through for a quick single. Approaching the halfway stage of the innings, and this run rate just can't get going. Still hovering around three and a half and over. Even with that maximum from Cameron Khan. Driven into the offside. There's going to be a single protection out there. General standard of cricket here this week has been really impressive. You're watching a side that is ranked 52nd in the world in the shape of Bahrain. And they are serving it right up to a side. The Beat Man yesterday. The 23rd in the ranked 23rd ranked side in the world. That is Qatar. Just going to be a single again. Bahrain's field setting and tactics much more impressive today than they were against Oman earlier in the group stages. In the first game for both sides on Sunday. Tuesday today and it's another glorious day in Muscat. Absolutely beautiful. The hottest day of the week. 28, 29 degrees now. We're in the shade luckily. One's driven down the ground. Just going to be a single. So at least Cameron Khan will retain the strike. But that's the halfway stage. Qatar going and just four and over. The score, 41 for two. So we're going to be spinning for the first time today. And the left arm spinner. Comes into the attack. Abdul Majid Malik. He was really good in the opening game against Oman. The only wicket taker. Bowled effectively as well yesterday against the Maldives. That was a very comfortable win for Bahrain. Can't quite cut that one off. We'll... The cover fielder, Anasim Khan, the skipper of Bahrain. So they'll get through for the single. But nervy times for all three sides. Don't know whose position you'd want to be in the most right now.
Perhaps Qatar with their massive net run rate advantage, but they're under the pump here. 32 in the 11th over. So many dots being soaked up by every batsman who's come in, who has come in to join Cameron Khan. Edged away off the outside edge and only as far as Imran Masood, but this Bahrain side has been sensational. Remember, they lost the toss they were asked to field first. Qatar sticking to their tried and tested platform. They made 196 the first day, 175 yesterday against Oman. They've got a very bowling attack to defend. This one's hit into the sky towards Long On. He runs around to his right. Taken. It's another wicket for Bahrain. Another wicket for Abdul Majid Malik. And that's a really poor shot, it has to be said. Mohamed Rizlan down the track. All he could do was pick out the long on fielder. And he's given it away. Bringing the replay here. Brave bowling by Abdul Majid Malik. Going nice and wide of the crease. Throwing it up above the eye line. And even though Mohamed Rizlan got a good... Way down the track towards the pitch of the ball. All he could do was pick out the long on fielder. Katara fall further. Four wickets down in the 11th over. So the new man of the crease for Qatar coming in at number six. That's Tamora Sajad, the next spinning all-rounder. He'll be the non-striker's end to start. Tamora Sajad, another name who's probably in the mix for the team of the tournament. But what a first over from Abdul Majid Malik. One wicket and one run coming from it. Qatar are in real trouble. It's 42 for four. So we're going to have another change in bowling. Bring back the big opening bowler, Imran Masood, but to close out his spell. And say the Bahrain captain, Addison Khan, is just thinking that he can get his medium pacers, four overs finished off without any damage at this stage. This innings from Qatar has just never got going. Of course, you've got to remember that these sides play back to back to back to back to back days, potentially. If you go all the way to the final, you play five T20Is in five days. Down the leg side will be signaled wide. 
see Cameron Khan's frustration. He's really trying to get this innings moving in the right direction. He's got 22. He's got about half the score for Qatar, but no one else has made any contributions. Just three boundaries in this over, or in this innings even. Day in the track hits it into the leg side. We haven't seen today from Qatar is what they did so well for the first two games. Hitting the ball early through the offside particularly. Opening up the gaps in the field. It's good batting, but singles are no good at the moment for Qatar. They've got to find a way to start finding the rope. They're just not doing it. It's that one into the leg side again. Cameron Khan seems to be looking leg side for almost every delivery today. But it's so beautifully through the offside on the first two matches where he made the back-to-back -back T20 International 50s. Mix-up. Straight to the man. We so often see a mix-up at backward point. Cameron Cam wanted the single, but Tamor Sajad didn't. Qatar in real trouble here. They need to get a move on. Power down the ground. Protection down there. The leg spinner, Junaid Aziz, who feels brilliantly and rather remarkably the only run, run, one. Surely enough time to get back for two there, but good piece of fielding in the deep keeps them to a single. Tamora Sajad was thinking, I'll keep the strike. So 12 overs gone. Qatar continue to struggle. 49 for four. So Abdul Mal Majid Malik will continue with his left arm spin. This inning's really going nowhere in a hurry. Hit back powerfully by Cameron Khan and finally he finds the offside. He might not have been aiming towards the offside, but he finds a boundary. Just after the 50s brought up, Cameron Khan moves to 28 and goes past 50% of his team score. Cut away. That's the part of the field. Brilliant. What an outstanding stop that is. Anasim Khan, like a gazelle, he leaps to his right. I'm going to try and bring you the replay of that. Absolutely outstanding. Full length, diving head first, getting one hand on it. It was cut away. It was cut away powerfully by Cameron Khan. Might miss the ball in the background, but let's see if we can bring you the replay of this incredible fielding. Like a gazelle. And as we come back live to you, you're going to see the arms outstretched because that one soared into the sky for six. Cameron Khan hitting his side back into the game. Almost a one-man batting show for 
Qatar at the moment. 88 in the first game. Another half century yesterday. Making 54 of 40 deliveries against Oman. He's in sight of a third consecutive T20 I-50 at the moment. More brilliant fielding. Bahrain are so up for this match. They know how much it means. They know if they lose, they are out. If they lose, they're on the plane home. If they win at 9.30 a.m. tomorrow morning, they might be playing a semi-final for a spot in the next round. No ball. First call of no ball that I've seen all this week. Let's see if we can see why this was signaled replay. Know why this was signaled replay, why it was signaled no ball. Apologies. It was an immediate call of no ball, and what that means is we're going to have a free hit. Let's see, was it a back foot no ball? No, front foot over, over the line. So back live with us now, we're going to have a free hit. Good decision from Afsal Shir Khan, a free hit. Just what Qatar need. Smashed into the sky, it will, may, may well be caught at extra cover, not going to matter. I'll get through for the single. So a good comeback from Abdul Majid Malik, but an expensive over, the most expensive one of the match. 14 runs coming from it, 13 overs gone. Qatar 63 for four. So seven overs remain for Qatar to start to get this total up to something of a defendable nature. Change it ends for Safraz Ali. He's going to come on now from the pavilion end. Surprised we haven't seen the leg spinner yet. Junaid Aziz. He's yet to be thrown the ball. And I wonder why that is so effective in his first two matches. Good quick flat leg spinner. That one's hit into the sky. There's a man at a deep square leg who's dropped it. That is a huge moment in the match. It's burst through his hands, put down by Muhammad Yunus. And to add insult to injury, it's gone for six. Wasn't a good delivery. It was a low full toss. But it's the star man, Cameron Khan. He's hit it powerfully, but it's a big hit out there today. It's probably about 80 yards. And here's the crucial moment. Could this be the crucial moment in Bahrain's campaign? He's put it down. He was never balanced underneath it, Mohamed Yunus. And he's palmed it off for six. And the six is followed up by a four, as so often happens. Cameron Cam within one strike now of another T20 I-50. into the offside and that's the region we saw Cameron Khan so explosive through in both the first and the second game.
Yeah, good batting. Something that not a lot of the partners of Cameron Khan have done so far. Tamar Sajad just getting Cameron Khan back on to strike. Really good Yorker. That was the delivery that cleaned up the left-hander, Imal Lianga, right into the block hole. But Cameron Khan's in too good form to fall to that. Although he did have the life of the drop catch. 12 runs off that over. Qatar 76 for four. Let's take a look at the over by over and a real demonstration of just how dominant Bahrain had been throughout this innings. But how Qatar are now coming back into the game, back to back overs, with more than 10 runs from them. The first time they're finding any momentum. And they're finding that momentum through the bat of the star batsman of the tournament. It's Cameron Khan. into the offside. It'll just be a single down to fielder at long off. Been really impressed with the standard of cricket here this week. You know, I've said it a couple of times, but for a side to be ranked 52nd in the world in the shape of Bahrain and to be putting it right up to Qatar right now shows the depth in the region. Big appeal. And he's given him. Cameron Khan is going to fall just short of a third T20I consecutive half century. Trapped in front by the left arm spin of Abdul Majid Malik. I'll just bring that graphic down off your screen now. He was looking for the sweep shot, Cameron Khan. He was trapped straight in front. Sorry we didn't bring you the footage of that one. Just got caught with the graphic up on the screen, but... Fifth wicket is gone. Abdud, Abdul Majid Malik has his second. Qatar fall further to 77 for five. New man to the crease at number seven. For Qatar is Kurram Shazad. Haven't had to see much of Kurram Shazad with the bat so far. Really good stuff this from Abdul Majid Malik. He's bowling his Bahrain side into the ascendancy. Two crucial wickets for him. Guitar with five overs left in his first innings are 77 for five.
Yeah, slight misfield at extra cover, but Ahmad Udin will still restrict it. Powered down the ground gracefully. By Tamar Sajad for a single. Singles aren't going to cut it at the moment for Qatar. They've got to somehow get up to 120, 130. They do have a really good bowling attack. moment all Qatar can do is knock the singles around those singles aren't really aiding the cause at all of Qatar setting something of a defendable total just been clever bowling keep it out of the hitting arcs of the right handers the anger the left hander never got going So let's take a look at the bowling figures. Simply outstanding Imran Javid. Don't see those kind of figures in a T20 too often. Three overs, none for two. Anasim Khan, the captain, the only slightly expensive one. And I just wonder why we haven't seen the leg breaks yet. Of Junaid Aziz, maybe we will see that six bowler use. But Abdul Mal Majid Malik has one over to go. And that was the last over for Safraz Ali. Good figures for him. You're seeing a bit of a conference between the two umpires, and they decide that you need a fresh ball on. A fresh old ball. I'm just being corrected in what I'm saying by some of the super support staff we have here at the, the Western region. Same condition is the exact words I've been described. And of course, I know that. I don't mean a new ball. A replacement ball was what I meant. You can see the third umpire out onto the pitch. That's Imran Mustafa Haji from Kuwait. The two standing umpires today, both from the home board, from Oman, Afsal Shir Khan and Anantha Kumar. Just making sure they get a ball that's in and around 15 or 16 overs used. They're happy with what they've got. Can often get that happening with the white balls in particular, not so much with the red balls. But with the white dyed leather, you end up with a little bit of damage. So, four overs remain, and Guitar have to hope that break and play will just bring about a change in momentum. Even if they go at 10 and over, they're only going to make 120. And I'm not sure 120 is going to be enough. I'm going to spend the 15 or 20 minutes of the break on my Excel spreadsheet working out the net run rates. How much are Bahrain going to need to win by? They'll probably need to win in something like the 16th over. Powered into the deep. I said they needed 10 and over. Hits like that are going to help, but only a couple of runs. Herod straight as a die down the ground. That's really good batting. Tamora Sajad's a talented all-round cricketer. We'll see him bowl his leg breaks later on. He's a beautiful bowler. Good batting. Four runs. Wide of the crease. Wide into the slot and hammered. Straight as a die. 
Back live with you now. Looks for the slog sweep this time right off the toe of the bat. No timing on that one. Won't have time to get back for two. Big appeal given. Abdul Majid Malik's magic spell continues. He's aptly named the Majid Magic Man from Bahrain. He's bowled beautifully throughout. And he's got another this time. Snuck him behind. Bowls his left arm spinners from so wide of the crease. You can see the attempt was the cut shot. A fine outside edge and a good catch taken by Imran Ali Butt behind the stumps. If you're Oman, if you're currently an Oman fan watching the stream, people from all around the world watching in their thousands on the Asian Cricket Council YouTube channel. Really good numbers for this afternoon game. There's such context to this match. But if you're an Oman fan, you're currently feeling the heat. And it's not the heat of the hot day in Muscat. It's the fact that their side, the hosts, the favourites, the pre-tournament favourites could be staring at the exit door. They could be gone. Because if Bahrain can chase down this total, And I'm just getting some inside news from Bertus de Jong, one of the great European cricket journalists. Probably the greatest journalist on the continent of Europe, Bertus de Jong. And he's also brilliant with his numbers. He's just telling me online here that they're probably going to need to chase this total with about four or five overs to spare. So if... They're chasing down a total of 120. They'll need to do it in about 15 overs to go into second place. Down the track. That's another one. Four for, for Abdul Majid Malik. What a spell of bowling. Absolutely outstanding from him. Poor batting, it has to be said, from the skipper. Iqbal Hussein, he came down the track. He didn't get near the pitch of the ball. Skidded on through to the keeper. And the keeper affected the most simple of stumpings. Imran Ali Butt, he's had a brilliant day with the gloves. Catch Anna stumping in that over. But Abdul Majid Malik has four for 23 from his four overs. Wonderful left arm spin bowling. Down the track, just skidding on. No huge turn and unfortunately for Iqbal Hussein, he was nowhere near it. Brings a big man to the crease. Mohammed Awais Malik, the big stocky fast bowler, in at number nine. But yeah, if those numbers from Burtis de Jong are right, and I have no doubt that they probably are, it will depend upon the final total and whether or not you go past it with a boundary off the final ball. But if you look at the points table here, none of those three sides is guaranteed a spot in the semi finals yet. So if they chase it with about five or overs or so to spare, Bahrain will go past Oman's net run rate. But what is even possible is that Bahrain would chase it inside around 11 or 12 overs and they go past Qatar as well. And then Qatar could be out. So all three of these teams, as we come back live with you, all three of these teams... Not guaranteed a semi-final spot yet, and very much playing for their tournament lives. So the smallest of margins, as they always are in these associate events, tend to come into play 
I just wonder our man kicking themselves at not pressing the accelerator button a bit sooner. Chasing down that Maldives total quicker. Big appeal, but surely the batsman's hit the ground there. This guitar innings has stuttered and stopped throughout. Hasn't gained any momentum without the solitary exception of Cameron Khan's brilliance. So just 15 overs remain. Sorry, 15 deliveries remain. Two and a half overs left in this first innings. And some can back in. He's clipped into the leg side. Junaid Aziz will have work to do. That's a misfield. So they'll get back for two comfortably. Bear in mind, of course, that we had the huge moment of Cameron Cam being dropped for six. Hit into the sky towards long off. It's going to fall in front of him. So the final delivery of the 18th over coming up. Anderson Khan has led his troops really well. I'm saying and explaining how Bahrain were pumped up for this match today. Finds the Yorker powered down towards long off. Really good fielding. That's first class. That's Imran Javed, who was brilliant with the ball. For his three overs, we'll see him come back and bowl one of these two death overs now. And he's just saved a certain boundary there as well. Two overs left. Qatar, 93 for seven. So the refreshments arrive in the commentary box. It's a warm day. Imran Javed into the attack. And he's going to be back with a wicket. What figures these are for the big left armour. I think he bowled three overs, none for two. Make that 3.1 overs, one for two. And he's gone down with a bit of cramp now as well. Keep you updated on his progress. He just went down after delivering that ball with a bit of cramp. Full into the block hole with that whippy left arm action. And all the batsman could do was pick out long on, chip it straight down his throat. So this has been outstanding from Bahrain. It's turned this Group A absolutely upside down. Into the leg side and thuds into the pads of 
Tamor Sajad, who is on strike because the batsman had crossed the new man to the crease. In at number 10, Guyan Budaka Wijawira Munawira, one of the players of Sri Lankan origin in this guitar setup, one of two Sri Lankan origin players alongside Imal Malindu Galianga. Great names of Sri Lankans always. I'm not going to try and attempt Chaminda Vass's name on air. I think we'll leave that one to David Bumble Lloyd. But just 10 deliveries remain. Qatar really struggling. Yeah, really good Yorker. They're going to be the first real runs come off the bowling of Imran Javid. Good batting from Goyan Munawira staying deep in the crease. Perhaps because he's a left arm seamer himself. He knew that the Yorker was coming. Just opens a face in the bat and steers it behind point for four runs. Opens the face, looks to find the same area, but Bahrain's captain Addison Khan had put the replacements in there behind square on the offside. It's been most impressive, arguably, about this innings from Bahrain. Not just the bowling and the intent, but they've got every decision right the way that their bowling changes have been marshaled by Anasim Khan, the skipper. Such a focused unit under the stewardship of Azim ul -Haq. Slower ball, hit down the ground. A good straight bat. And just going to be a couple of runs. Good little knock this from Tamora Sajad, but only going at a run of ball. As the 100 comes up, seven deliveries remain. Yeah, just give you a quick update from the Academy Oval 2 ground behind us, Iran passing 100, 100 for the first time this week. And they take on Kuwait, the slower ball again from Imran Javid. He can't believe it, signaled wide. I don't think there was any contact with the pad there, so Afsal Shir Khan gets another decision right. He's having a good day. The umpire at the Al Emirat end. But yeah, Iran taking on. Kuwait in Group B right now on the back pitch there. Innings has finished a little quicker than ours. In fact, I think the game started just ahead of ours. A little bit slow, Coachy, over here on pitch one. They made 106 from their 20 overs. Brilliant bowling, huge appeal. And given, we've seen both of their umpires take the time that they need over their decisions. And it was a pleading appeal from Imran Javid. It put it into what looked like the back pad to me. of Tamur Sajad, and he's got to go. LBW, and that is no more than that spell of bowling from Imran Javid deserved. He's going to finish with two for ten. World-class stuff from him. Here's the replay. The only question to answer was, did it pitch outside leg? And it looks very marginal on that replay to me. Probably going on to hit leg stump, no doubt. But did it pitch in line? That's what Tamur Sajad will be thinking. It's pitched outside leg and he's been a little bit unlucky. And he may well have been. But all that matters is the decisions being given by the umpire. And that's the ninth wicket. So in all the way down at number 11 for Qatar is Mohammed Nadim. Not Mohammed Nadim of 
Oh man, fame, but Mamma Nadim of Qatar. And we had the namesakes playing against each other yesterday. Which was lovely to see. Into the final over the innings, and it'll be the skipper to bowl it. Anison Khan. Are we on the verge of another epic upset in Group A? We've already had one. Qatar beating Oman yesterday. Or Bahrain about to do the same giant killing feat to Qatar. Big smiles from fielders in the field for Bahrain. Junaid Aziz is down next to us here and been full of life throughout the innings. It's been really impressive with the exception of that solitary dropped catch as well from Bahrain has been their fielding. Ground fielding, quick to the ball, turning twos into ones. And what we're gonna do during the half time break is try and run some of those numbers. Work out exactly the permutations. Because if Bahrain can take this win over Qatar, just to say it once again, all three teams will be tied on four points each with two wins each, two wins and one loss. And what that means is it will come down to net run rate to see who takes the two semi-finalist spots. It's almost impossible for Oman, in fact, it is impossible for Oman to finish first in the group. Is that one's down the leg side and signaled wide. So what that means is that Qatar do sit with the big net run rate advantage, having had two big wins the first two days. But Bahrain could not only play themselves into second position, they could even play themselves into first. Big swing and a miss. Guy and Munawira looking to smash that one down the ground, making no contact. That one's hit into the offside, just going to be a single. Just half a throw coming in, really, from Safraz Ali. Wise not to throw at full pace. Doesn't want to give away an overthrow. So one delivery remained. Just the solitary delivery left now in this innings. And Qatar have been comprehensively outplayed at the moment, but you never quite know what's going to happen in a game till both sides have batted there. Significantly under par, you'd have to think, compared to the scores we've seen all throughout the week on both pitches. And a big swing and a miss means that they won't even have time to run through for a bye. It means the innings will end on 106 for nine. And you just can't predict what's gonna happen in this Asian Cricket Council, Western Region T20. It's all part of the road to the Asia Cup 2020. And right now we have absolutely no idea who the two teams that are going to go through from this group. Will it be Bahrain and Qatar? Will it be Qatar and Oman? Could it somehow be Bahrain and Oman? I don't think that's actually possible anymore. But one thing is for certain, Bahrain will be delighted with their effort in the first innings. They've restricted Qatar to 106 for nine from their 20 overs, meaning they're gonna need 107 to win. And by my calculations, if Bahrain can chase this total down in around 15 overs, I'll try and get you the exact numbers for the second half. I'll have to get it into my Excel spreadsheet, my net run rate calculator. If they chase it down in around 15 overs, they will go past Oman into second place. If they chase it down in around 12 overs, which is absolutely possible, they might even go into first. 
And just to reaffirm what we're talking about, there's the points table on screen. So if Bahrain can take the win, we're going to have three teams and four points. And it's all down to the maths of the magic of net run rate. There's the batting card. For Qatar, Cameron Khan, 46 off 43 deliveries. And Tamora Sajad, 23 off 22. Not a solitary other batsman made it into double figures. And when you've only two men who make it into double figures, you're not going to end up having a good score. Unless the two of them are making hundreds, perhaps. So real struggles. But Cameron Khan, the form player of the tournament, nearly 200 runs in his three and in so far. Fell just short of three back-to-back T20i 50s. But the two-star men for the ball with me, Abdul Majid Malik, obviously four for 23 from his four overs, but Imran Javid, outstanding. Three overs at the top, went for just two runs, and then he came back to take two wickets in his final over. He could have had more as well. Outstanding. But all the bowlers contributed. Imran Masood, but two wickets opening the bowling, and the solitary wicket for Safraz Ali as well. Captain won't mind going wicketless on a day like today. When his side restrict, the team ranked 30 places higher than them to just 106. So that's the state of play at the halfway stage. Qatar, they were in the box seat. They're now in a world of trouble. We're going to come back with you with every ball of the chase and find out which two teams will qualify from Group A in about 15 minutes' time.
Yeah, good afternoon and welcome back to the Oman Turf Academy One Ground here in Al Amaret, Oman, about 15 minutes outside of Muscat, 15 to 20 kilometers. And if you're just joining us for the first time this week, perhaps you're watching the final game of Group A of the Western Region T20 Asia Cup. And Bahrain are off to a flying start. I'm going to try and explain the permutations to you, but it's Safraz Ali and Mohamed Yunus opening up the batting. Facing up to the big Mohamed Away's Malik bowling, and the first ball is carted away for four over the offside. A bit of width given, just hammered into the deep. So there are simply all sorts There are all sorts of permutations. I'm going to hopefully try and get these permutations right for you. They're not simple. And I have to thank Bertus de Jong, the European cricket journalist, for helping me with these permutations. But I think broadly what we're saying is that all of the permutations we're going to discuss are if Bahrain chased down this total. In essence, if Bahrain lose here and Qatar can hold on for the win, obviously Qatar will win the group and Oman will be second. That's simple. However, if Bahrain win, there are a number of permutations. If they take a long time to make the chase, something between 15 to 20 overs to make the chase, Bahrain will stay in third, Oman will cling on to second, and Qatar will be first. However, if they take in between something like 11.4 to 15 overs to chase it down, Qatar will be first, but Bahrain will go past Oman into second. Nicely bold, clearly going over the top. And if they chase this total down very quickly, between 9 and 11.4 overs, Bahrain would spring all the way up to first, Qatar would drop into second, and Oman would be third. However, there is one more rather remarkable set of circumstances that would see Qatar go out of the tournament. If Bahrain could somehow chase this total down in nine overs or less, Qatar would be the ones going out. This one skied straight towards Minoff. Going to be a chance and taken. That's the first wicket and that's what Qatar needed. Looking to take the aggressive route down the ground. And all he can do is pick out Mohamed Tanvir at Midoff, who takes a really good catch. It wasn't easy. He had to run backwards. Flick off his cap. And the first wicket falls. Mohamed Yunus, the left-hander, has gone for a duck. The length delivery heaved into the sky, looking to clear the infield. Got the elevation. But couldn't get it over the head of Mohamed Tanvir at mid-off. So we have probably around an hour, hour and 15 minutes of absolute drama here at the Academy Oval. Oh man, Academy Oval. One ground here. Turf one as it's called. Because anything could really happen over the next hour and 15 minutes. Three sides battling it out for two spots. Oh man, watching nervously on from their hotel in downtown Muscat. Qatar will be thinking one thing only. Let's use our brilliant bowling attack to bowl this Bahrain team out. Restrict them to less than the 106 we've made. And then we control our own fate. We go through with three wins and stay top of the table.
Good delivery, back of a length. The new man in at the crease for Bahrain is the debutant, Mohamed Fayez. He's been struggling. He's been struggling with a little bit of a virus and a bit of an illness. So, getting lots of questions coming in, asking us what are the permutations. The permutations are complicated, to say the least. There are still four permutations, remarkably. Big smile from Mohammed Awais, Malik down as a third man. He'll be complimented in opening the bowling by his left arm, quick opening bowler, Guyan Munawira. Been really impressive, the left arm seamer. Ramping the pace up. And ramping the heat up. The heat is on here. Anything possible over the next hour and 15 minutes or so. Beautiful delivery, that thuds into the arm of the debutant. Mohamed Fayaz Samir clangs into his arm. Safraz Ali, who'd face the final delivery of the first over with the batsman having crossed over. So welcome to T20 International Cricket, Mohamed Samir Fayaz, because he's just being clocked flush on the arm by Guy and Budukit to step up to the international stage. He's finding that out. Struggling with an illness the last two days. Had a bit of a fever. But well enough to take the field today. And he's batting at number three for Bahrain. And he's going to hit his second delivery for a boundary. It looks to me like Bahrain are not just going to try and chase this total down, but chase it down in a hurry. See them there, all with their spreadsheets out. Remember, the calculations that we give you are unofficial. We'll have to wait for the tournament organizers, the statisticians to do their official net run rate calculations. But in essence, to try and keep this simple, Bahrain must chase this down in 15 overs or less. I think it might be 14.5, depending upon the exact final scores. But 15 overs or less, and they've got a chance. In that instance, they would go past Oman and knock Oman out. But then there's all the other permutations. They chase it down in between 9 and 11.4 overs. Bahrain could get themselves up to first. I'm going to call that one the most optimistic appeal of the week from Guyan Munawira right off the middle of the bat. And he goes up. An appeal for the LBW. No short of enthusiasm here in the Gulf for this Asian Cricket Council. Western Region T20 qualifier. Really good pace, but down the leg side and every run, whether it's a wide or not, being cheered by Bahrain at the moment. That's Afsal Shir Khan at the Al Emirate end as the standing umpire. Joined by his colleague from the home board, that's Anantha Kumar. And Imran Mustafa Haji from Kuwait, the third umpire. Looks for the big heave down the ground. Comes off the inside edge into the pad. So one more delivery to come. Because of the wide. Remember this Qatar bowling attack has been outstanding in the opening two matches. Far too good for the Maldives in game one. But too good as well for host Oman in game two. Taking a 34 run win yesterday over Oman. Into the sky, he's going to get just enough to get it over the infield. 
Won't have the legs to go all the way to the boundary, but he'll pick up a couple. A real statement of intent from Bahrain. Two overs gone. Scores 14 for one. In fact, there was one delivery left in the over, my apologies. So that will close out the second over. Bahrain, 12 for one. What a shot that is. One of the biggest sixes of the whole week. It was right into the slot. And Safraz Ali has hammered that absolutely miles over long off. Look at this for a strike. It was right into the slot, over pitched from Oez Malik. Clears the front leg, swings through the ball, and look at the umpire's reaction. His neck cranes back as it soars all the way for six. It's down in the car park. Wonder are the cars okay? Could be some damage down in the oh man cricket academy car park. Looks like we've got the ball back at least. Bahrain making a huge statement. If you're just joining us. I have to remind you. I've said it a few times, but there's nearly 30 ranking spots between these two teams. Bahrain ranked 53rd in the world, 52nd in the world, and Qatar ranked 23rd. This would be a huge turn up for the books. Good comeback. That's a better length and a better line as well. Not allowing Safraz Ali to free his arms. See the required run rate at the bottom of your screen there. Just five and over. But for Bahrain, that doesn't really matter because they have to chase this total down in 15 overs or less. And we'll take a look at the points table at the end of this over to explain why. It's all going to come down to net run rate if they can win this match. They have to win the match, though, of course, to join the other two sides on four points. And with shots like that, the second six of the innings hammered down the ground again. They are going to be winning this match. Brilliant batting. From Safraz Ali, the second almighty strike of the over. Yeah, what a shot that is. Straight as a die. Not quite as big as the first one. The first one was larger. First one, probably something like a 90 meter hit. There's 70 meter boundaries here all the way around. Not small boundaries by any stretch of the imagination. C cut away this time, really good stop in the field. Slight mix up the running between the wickets. We will get through. Qatar under pressure here. I wonder if they got their calculators out, working the permutations out. The representatives of both the sides coming up and asking us, do you know exactly what the calculations are? Net run rate always can be a little unpredictable as well because you've got the added 
imponderable permutations of the fact that if the f scores are tied and you hit the last ball for a four or a six, that skews the exact net run rates again. Pull shot this time. Beats the fielder at mid-wicket. And it's going to beat the fielder in the deep as well. Despite the best efforts of Zaharudin, he can't pull it off. And Mohamed Severe Fayez is getting into the action now as well. What an over this is. Already 17 runs coming from it. And we're going to have to go to the points table at the end of this over and try and explain the permutations to you again because all four of the potential results are currently in play, I reckon. So 17 runs from the over, Bahrain on top. 29 for one after three. So try and stay with me here as I talk you through these permutations. Just pay one final thanks to Bertus de Jong for his help with these. But in essence right now, I'm just going to talk you through the permutations if Bahrain chase this total down. So if they chase it between 15 and 20 hours, if they take that long to chase, they will remain in third place. Oman will remain in second and Qatar will finish first. However, if they chase the total in between 11.4 overs and about 15 overs, maybe 14.5, so they can complete that chase, the 12th, 13th, 14th over. Then Qatar will stay first, but Bahrain will go above Oman into second, and Oman, the tournament favourites, would be out. And the third possibility, if they chase in between 9 and 11.4 overs, Bahrain would finish first, Qatar would finish second, so Bahrain would leap all the way to the top of the table, Qatar second. And Oman, third, the final permutation, perhaps the most unlikely, something like 8.5 overs or less. If they can absolutely fly and soar and chase this total down quickly, Bahrain would go all the way to first, but it would be Oman in second and Qatar in third. So who would have thought that Qatar, after the start that they had to this tournament with two brilliant wins, could even be staring at elimination? Going to see a change in bowling, and it's going to be the leg spinner to more Sajad into the attack. And he's going to be cut away. Not a huge amount of technique to that one, but it was just back of a length, and he does like to open up that front leg, Safraz Ali, and cuts it away backward a point for another boundary. Truly extraordinary scenes here. Not sure anyone could have predicted the goings on this morning. Qatar and Oman fans equally nervous right now. Beautifully bold. Being brought into the attack early. Tamor Sajad. They've decided spin is the way to go. But because he's bowling in the power play, just two fielders outside the circle. Those fielders at Cow Corner and Long On at the moment. Not really bowling the right line for his two men in the deep. Keeping a little bit low outside the off stump. Back to back dots. Good bowling. Don't think he's going to be giving it any flight. He doesn't want to allow Safraz Ali the loop to power the ball down the ground. So it's been flat leg break so far. Flat again and skews off the inside edge. So nearly bowls him. Just be a single. Good fielding from Mohamed Tanvir for the second time. He took the one catch for the solitary wicket to fall so far. Bahrain right now. Almost arguably in the position you'd like to be in. The most of the three sides in the mix. Big appeal, and given. He's been absolutely majestic in this tournament so far, and Tamor Sajad has done it again. The gamble to bring his leg breaks on in the power play has paid off. And he's trapped Mohamed Samir Fayez, LBW, 
looking for the sweep shot playing across the line and he's been given let's take a look at the replay Absolutely sure can the standing umpire pitched in line hit him on the front pad right in front of middle and off and that's a good decision he did have a decent stride in but for me that's only going on to hit one thing and that's middle maybe middle and off played right across the line Mohamed Sabir Fayez but do bear in mind that wickets fallen do not impact the net run rate. So if Bahrain chased this down with eight wickets having fallen in 14 overs or two wickets having fallen in 14 overs, it makes no difference. They'll still be through to the semi-finals and keep their dreams alive of a spot in the next stage. Yeah, huge numbers tuning in now. Over 3,000 concurrent viewers on this Asian Cricket Council live stream. Delighted to be bringing these pictures. Andrew Leonard here in the commentary box. And Qatar are going to go to their captain, Iqbal Hussein. He had a prolific 2019 with the ball in hand. 31 T20 international wickets. And yesterday he was magnificent in the field. While his teammates were dropping catches all around him. He took two absolute stunners. Gave it a few celebrations as well. No more than medium pace, but a clever change-up bowler. Seen him bowl quite a bit at the death in this tournament, but he's probably realising more than anyone that the side are in a battle for their lives right now. Power it down towards long on. Half a chance. Can't really call that a chance. They're going to get back for two. Direct hit would have been out. Really good work in the deep from Darmang Patel, who's on as a subfielder. I don't know who he's on for. He might be on for Cameron Khan again. We saw that yesterday. But really good work. One of those horrible ones in the deep. You don't know whether to go for the catch or save the boundary. Patel saves the four. So the graphics at the bottom of your screen say 71 to win off 15 overs, 4.5 and over. That doesn't really matter. Bahrain need to chase this down in 15 overs or less. Powered into the sky. That one's going to soar all the way for six. That's an extraordinary shot. What power from Safraz Ali, who was a length delivery. And at the pace that Iqbal Hussein bowls, it just sat up to be hit. It was hit high and handsome and right out of the middle. Thought just for a moment it might be coming down to our commentary position here. It's landed about 10 yards to our left. What a shot this is. Soars all the way down the ground. Beautifully tracked by our camera crew. Nearly into the car park. The third six.
Okay, and you might have just lost my voice for a moment or two there, but back live with you now. Our mic running out of batteries. Thank you for the messages alerting us to that. Slower through the air, really beautifully bowled. And even the dot balls are getting big cheers now. So that's the end of the power play and maybe some relief for Qatar. At least they can get five men out to try and protect the boundaries. But what a power play it's been for Bahrain. 53 for two. And almost all of the runs coming from the bat of Safraz Ali. 41 he's got at the moment. And the 41 he's got has come from just 23 deliveries. Four huge sixes and three fours. He's playing his side into a position where Tomorrow morning at 9.30 a.m. They could be one win away. In fact, they will be one win away from a spot in the next stages. Qatar have to find something. Remember, if Bahrain chase this down in the next four or five overs or so, it could be Qatar that are going out. And not Oman. Whatever happens, we're in for a remarkable 30 minutes or so coming up. Mix up, running between the wickets, going to be a dot ball. And what Imran Ali Butt has to do here is just get off strike. Get down the far end. Safraz Ali is hitting them so well. He's not going to get off strike. He's going to get a boundary four. What do I know? Doesn't need to get off strike. He can go through the offside and... Beat the cover fielder. It was floated up teasingly by Iqbal Hussein. And long off, Darman Patel had absolutely no chance. That one comes off the outside edge again. Who would have thought it? Bahrain, possibly not just looking at going through, but they could be going through in first place. That would set up a Bahrain. Kuwait clash and one of those sides would be going on to the regional qualifier and who's it going to be in second then? Will it be Qatar? Will it be Oman? Still so many permutations possible. So, seven overs gone. And the score now, Bahrain, 58 for two. So we're going to see a change in bowling and spin will be replaced by spin. We see the left arm spin now of Mohammed Nadim. Every over crucial really for 
Katara here. They have to drag this chase out as long as they can. And no doubt that Delete Mendes, the head coach of Oman, and his side are watching on now and watching very nervously. Thanks for the slog sweep immediately. Yeah. Probably just get a single down to long on. Who would have thought it? Bahrain staring potentially at first place in the group. If you look back to the first game where Bahrain were bowled out for 83 by Oman, and Oman took an absolute age to chase that down. 13.2 overs, they knocked the ball around. Small moments like that, the net run rate gets affected just as much by the first game as it does by the last game. Oman potentially going to be kicking themselves now that they, they didn't hammer home that advantage over Bahrain in game one. Short outside the off stump through to the keeper. Every dot really is massive now for Qatar. Remember, Bahrain just need to chase this in 14.5 overs or less, and they will advance through, albeit it could be in second or it could be in first. But they will definitely go through to the semi-finals. I think right now that's all their head coach and captain, Azimul Haq and Anasim Khan, are really going to care about. It's just going to be a single down to long off. And they probably have in their head that 14.5 over target. They don't even necessarily know about the other permutations, whether or not they could knock Oman out or knock Qatar out or get themselves up to first in the table. All they'll want is a chance tomorrow at 9.30 a.m., even if that's in second spot and it means they've got to play the UAE. They'll still have hope. One's pulled into the deep. Going to be work to do for Long On, who picks up cleanly. Really good fielding. Some of the ground fielding we've seen this week has actually been really good. Some of the catching, on the other hand, has been poor. We saw five catches go down for Qatar yesterday. Are they kicking themselves now? They should have beaten Oman by more than 34 runs. Drop five catches. Three of them regulation. Forty-six more runs required. Bahrain. Safraz Ali is going to continue with his aggression. Tries to heave that one down the ground for six. Gets nowhere near it and ends up with a single. Forty-five to win. And if we take out the required run rate graphic at the bottom of your screen, that doesn't matter. Because a chase in 16, 17 or 18 overs is no good to Bahrain. They've got to do it. Inside the 15th over, around the 14.4 or 14.5 over mark, we reckon. That one's cut away to the sweeper out on the extra cover boundary. Who would have thought that Oman could be staring at going out of this competition? Let's take a look at the points table again and explain to you these permutations. If you're just joining us, see the numbers spiking now. We're travelling around about the potential shock. Bahrain, 63 for two. Chasing down this total of 106. And there's the points table. Going to try and keep this as simple as possible one more time for you. I'm trying to understand it myself. That's why I'm trying to keep it simple. So if Bahrain chase down this total, and they chase it down between 15 and 20 overs, they're out. However... They chase it down between 11.4 overs and 14.5. They will be through in second place. And they'll be through at the expense of the hosts, Oman. If they chase it in between 9 overs and 11.4 overs, Bahrain will catapult all the way up to first. Qatar will then finish second. And Oman would finish third. However, if they can somehow do it in the next two overs, which is highly unlikely, 
they indeed would catapult up to first and they'd knock Qatar out. So Qatar just have to drag this game out to at least the 10th over. And they'll be through, but they're not going to want to go through in second. They're going to want to go through in first. Big appeal given. Magnificent keeping. That's outstanding. That's one of the best bits of glove work we've seen. Keeper up to the stumps. He was absolutely certain he had his man. And the square leg umpire agrees. Safraz Ali falls short of a 50. And he's gone for 43. Look at this for a sharp piece of glove work. Taken outside the off stump. He was absolutely certain. Looks like the back foot just dragged out a little. And that's the third wicket to fall. That's just going to do it for Qatar, I reckon. Drag this game out long enough. And now the real conundrum is, can Bahrain get these 43 runs in the next six or seven overs or so? They're going to need to do it. Just seen one of the best bits of glove work of the tournament. Mohamed Rizlan, Qatari keeper. Turning into a very hot afternoon on the pitch and off the pitch. Here in beautiful Oman. Cut away into the deep. Just going to be a single. And now the focus shifts again for Bahrain. Probably aren't even thinking of the potential of leapfrogging into first position. They'd really have to get the accelerator going for that. They need to get these runs chased down in the next three, 3.1 overs. The big ass to do that for 42 required. Two new men at the crease. So Qatar, they must have been really worried and they won't be happy with their performance. Neither will their head coach. They won't be happy that they might go down to defeat here. They're scrapping for their lives though. That one's heaved into the leg side. That'll just be a single. New man to the crease there. He's just got off the mark. Ahmed Udin joining Imran Ali Butt at the crease, the keeper batsman. Everyone's hit down the ground. Again, just going to be a single. For Bahrain, ignore those graphics at the bottom of your screen that say they require just three and a half and over. That's not really relevant to them. They've got about five and a half overs to get these 40 runs. So no easy task within itself. I'll just give you a very quick update from the other ground. Kuwait are just about to seal the deal and close out victory in the Group B clash, which means they'll finish second. UAE will win the group and win it comfortably, three from three. But Kuwait... I've beaten out Iran today. They need about 20 to win off the second half of their innings. They'll do that comfortably. I'm having to deem the left arm spinner is going to continue from the Al Emirat end. Yeah, the big hitting attempts continue from Bahrain, but. Outside of Safra's alley, no one has really been able to get going. Shades of the Qatar innings, really, where it was just Cameron Khan who was showing off his big hitting exploits, leading run scorer in the tournament. But 
you'd have to think now that it's realistically all about getting across the line. Need these 39 runs in about five overs. Bold him. Could be in danger of losing the game. We have another twist. And the Oman fans cheer on that wicket. Mam and Nadim has knocked over Imran Ali. But the keeper batsman for Bahrain looking for a big slog sweep. I'm not sure they need to be going for these huge shots. Bahrain. Let's take a look at the replay. Been so good all week, Mohamed Adim with his left arm spin. Tall, upright action. Gets it down a good pace and not a huge amount of turn, but that's exactly where any bowler should hit, whether you're a seamer or a spinner. The top of off, that's exactly what he did. An agricultural hoik across the line. And Imran Ali Butt is gone. Fourth wicket falls, 68 for four. Another turn in the game. So the new man in for Bahrain is Fayaz Ahmed. He got off the mark off his first delivery. Pressure on all of a sudden. 38 more runs needed. Going to need to score them in about five overs or so. Beautiful bowling this from Mohamed Nadeem. Seen some brilliant spells of bowling throughout the week. Such talent on show throughout this western region of the Asian Cricket Council. Players making a name for themselves on the international stage. That one smashed down the ground. Has he got all of it? He has. We didn't hear the cheers from across to our right from Bahrain because they didn't know whether it was going to fly for six or not either. But he's got enough of it. Ahmed Udin hammers that one down the ground. Here's the replay, perhaps just a touch over pitched. He came outside his off stump, very agricultural. Got enough of it to go for six. And he's going to repeat the dose, but not all the way for six this time over the offside. So those back-to-back -back boundaries give Bahrain real hope of staying alive. The halfway stage of the chase, it's 79 for four. So Qatar perhaps don't know their fate. They're trying to battle it out and find these last six wickets. 28 to win now. Nick Bell is saying the skipper is going to continue. Just take a really quick look if we can at the bowling figures, the bowling options we've seen. Qatar used just the five bowlers throughout. That one's hit into the leg side. It's another boundary for, uh, for Fayaz. In fact, it's not for Fayaz. It's for Ahmed Udin. Another boundary. He's gone 6-4-4 four, four from the last three deliveries he's faced. 
Bahrain within touching distance, 23 more to win. Their bench on the sideline feel like they need to chase this within 14.5 overs to stay in the tournament and they're right. They know what they need to do. They're not going to care about whether they finish first or second because this morning they thought they were out. You'd have to think that Oman's failure to give the Maldives a heavy defeat could cost them very sorely. Beats him outside the off stump. Constantly moving around the crease, Amadudin. That one's heaved into the sky. There's a fielder out there, but it's gone. Not only to his right, but it's gone over his head as well. Six more. Bahrain just 17 to win. And surely now within sight of taking the most unlikely of semi-final spots. Into the slot. It was a slower ball. The leg cutter really well picked up by Amadudin. What a gem of a knock this is. 23 from nine deliveries just after Bahrain had lost wickets and you thought that this chase might stutter. Well, we're just trying to work out the calculations here now. I think there's still a chance that Bahrain might do this quickly enough to get up to first. Such drama here at the Western region. Asia Cricket Council T20 tournament. Two spots from the eight teams going on to the overall qualifier where just one team will join the big boys. India, Pakistan. This one heaved down the ground towards Noe's Malik and he hasn't hit that out of the middle so plenty of time to get back for two. And bring up the points table at the end of this over. I'm not sure if Qatar know their fate right now. Do they know that if they go down to defeat, they will still be through? As far as we can work out, they will definitely progress to the semi-finals, Qatar. And it's going to either be in first or second place, depending upon what happens over the next five or six deliveries because there's still a chance that Bahrain could leapfrog into first. The end of 11 overs, it's 93 for four. So here's the points table. One of the permutations is out of the equation. Qatar will have enough to go through to the semi-finals, whatever happens. They needed to be beaten within about 9.4 overs, something like that, to be dropped down, dragged down all the way down to third. However... Right now, if this chase is done in the next four deliveries, potentially five, depending, five or six, depending upon whether or not a boundary is hit off the final delivery, Bahrain could leapfrog all the way into first. Absolutely extraordinarily, they were in third place. With Oman playing the Maldives, you'd have to have fancied them. But if they take in between. 12 and 15 overs to chase it down which you'd have to think is the most likely result right now what's going to happen is Qatar will remain first in the table Bahrain will go to second and Oman will be out just going to try and give you some more updates and have to pay a special tribute to Bertus de Jong who's writer you'll have read in Crick Buzz and publications across the world. Super journalist helping us with uh, some of these calculations remotely. So Bahrain could take as much as 12.3 overs to chase it down if they finish with a boundary six. So if they get the scores tied and then smash a six, they do that in 12.3 overs. That's in nine deliveries time. That'll be enough. So it's 14 to win. You can see the leg spinner brought back on to bowl to more Sajad.
And then Ahmad Udin has played an absolutely game-changing knock. 27 from 12 deliveries just when Bahrain looked like they were rattled and looked like they might not only not chase the total in time, but maybe even go down to defeat, but he's played a beauty. The message is coming on from the side. All the Bahrain side know is they want to chase this in 14.5 overs or less. I don't think they're even aware of the fact they could leapfrog all the way into first. But it's probably not going to change the way they're playing. Fayez Ahmed and Ahmad Udin are going to go for it. And they're absolutely going to go for it and dropped. Couldn't get a hand on it. Away is Malik. Really good fielding though. Backed up by Cameron Khan who's back onto the pitch. Skewed wide off the outside edge of the bat and looped just agonizingly out of reach. Not always Malik, the big fast bowler. Looks for the big hit, not where he intended it, but there's no one behind square on the leg side, so it's going to be a boundary four. He's looking to hammer that out towards deep mid wicket. He keeps walking across his crease, and it's proving so effective for Amadudin. 99 now. Eight more runs to win. We can't be exactly certain because of the vagaries of net run rate. But if Bahrain can do this in maybe two hits, they could be top of the table. Cut away. And it's cut away for another boundary. Bahrain realise they're within touching distance. They're going to stay in this competition. And rather unbelievably, Oman are going to be going out. Oh man, the forum side and associate cricket around the world are going to be going out almost no matter what happens now. The only thing we're really playing for is seeing whether or not it's going to be Bahrain. That one's heaved into the deep. It soars all the way for six. And we think by our calculations... That could be Bahrain into first place. We're going to have to wait and see. We'll need to get the calculators out. But what a knock from Amadouddin. Great scenes of joy here. Six runs smashed into the deep. He hammers 41 off just 15 deliveries. Bahrain win by six wickets. And look at these scenes. Great scenes of joy for Bahrain. They were dead and buried. We think they might just have done enough to not only qualify for the semi-finals, but leapfrog. Qatar, who've been so dominant in this group, into first place. We're going to bring you the news on that now. Remember, whatever news we bring you will be unofficial. We'll have to wait for the official tournament statistician because it's quite literally all happening. I think not only have Oman been beaten out of sight and knocked out of this tournament, but I think Bahrain have leapfrogged Qatar into first. I'm not sure they know that yet, but they know one thing for certain. They're still in this tournament. They've stayed in the semi-finals, and look at that. Ahmad Udin is being given a hero's reception by his teammates. Almost carried off the pitch. They couldn't get him the whole way off. I'm not too sure what we've just witnessed here. One of the most remarkable T20 internationals you'd ever want to see. 29 places separate these two sides in the T20 international rankings. And Bahrain have caused an upset for the ages. They've turned over a Qatar side who just yesterday beat a much fancied Omani team. And we're going to bring you some calculations now. Remember, these are not 100% official. But I gather that Bahrain are going to top this group. Here we go. Let's take a look at the points table. If my maths are correct, and Bertus de Young's maths are correct, Bahrain, there it is. They have not only qualified, they have topped the table, Bahrain. They have gone past Qatar on net run rate. Buddy Pradhan's come over to me, the Nepal umpire assessor. He can't believe it. Neither can I. Extraordinary scenes over the last hour or so, and a beautiful moment. 
And you just missed it in the background there, but the entire squad kneeling down and kissing the turf. Amazing scenes really here. This is a Bahrain side who you'd have given almost no chance to. 52nd in the world coming into this tournament. What a wonderful story this is. Barney Reed's just come across from the second pitch and he's just asked me, are a man gone? He can't believe it either. I'm not sure anyone can. The ground is simply shell-shocked. Quite a few man fans in on the banks. But look at these scenes. I've never seen a more focused side before a T20 International than today. They spent about 15 minutes, every single member of that squad. And watch these scenes of celebration. Here we go. One, two, three is going to be the shout. One, two, three, Bahrain. A historic day. Without doubt, the greatest day in Bahrain cricket's young history. We called the exact same thing for Qatar yesterday. Qatar will be shell-shocked, but they will have another chance. And who's to say the way this tournament's been going that they won't turn over the UAE tomorrow? But pending final confirmation from the tournament committee, we can bring you the news that the semi-finals at 9.30 a.m. tomorrow are going to be Bahrain against Kuwait and the UAE against Qatar. So either Bahrain or Kuwait are going off to the regional qualifier and Bahrain have just disappeared into their changing room and there are great scenes of celebration going on. One of the most extraordinary days that you could ever witness. Just getting a few more updates off Twitter here and essentially the margin that Bahrain have topped this table by is just two runs. That's how small the margins are in modern T20 international cricket. And Oman and the Oman Cricket Board, who have played such brilliant hosts to this tournament, are rather remarkably out of this tournament. I'm certain that the whole squad and Delete Mendes watching on from home, they're going to be gutted. But look at how close those net run rates are. Bahrain 1.46, Qatar 1.39, and Oman, they are going to rue the manner in which they chase down that Maldives total. They chased it down with 10 wickets to spare. But there were just too many dots and singles, and unfortunately that's ended up costing them. And it's cost them a spot in the semi-finals. They are out of the Asia Cup. They will not be going to the next round of the qualifier, and they won't have a chance to go on to the main event itself. So the UAE against Qatar, it's going to be tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. That game will be on pitch two. My colleague Barney Reid is going to bring you that one. I'm going to have the remarkable Bahrain story to commentate on. It's going to be Bahrain against Kuwait here on pitch one with me, Andrew Leonard. Just bring you the batting card. Here's the batting card for Bahrain. What a knock it was from Safraz Ali at the top, 43 off 27. But the game-changing innings and the person who has to be man of the match in my book, Ahmed Udin, 41 off 15 deliveries. When that fourth wicket fell, I just wondered, were Bahrain going to collapse, maybe even lose the match? They've not only got up for the win, got into second place, they've got up in enough time, thanks to that Ahmed Udin's knock, to jump into first place. So quite remarkable what you've witnessed over the course of the last hour. I did tell you, I said we were going to be in for an unbelievable hour of cricket. And that's exactly what we've seen. There's the bowling figures for Qatar, a wicket apiece from Mohamed Awais Malik. Tamar Sajad, the impressive leg spinner. Iqbal Hussain, the skipper. And Mohamed Nadim, two overs, one for 17. But all four of the bowlers, well, five of the bowlers even, treated harshly. And this is the confirmation. Confirmation that Bahrain take the win by six wickets. Leapfrog both Qatar and Oman into first place. Oman are out. And we're going to leave you with the confirmation, the points table on your screen. There are the four semi-finalists. What a three days of cricket we've had. And the good news is 
We'll do it all again tomorrow, 9.30 a.m. Both games will take place concurrently. I'll be bringing you the pictures here from Bahrain versus Kuwait. And Barney Reid will bring you the pictures of the UAE against Qatar. Record numbers on the stream from the whole week so far today. I want to thank you and thank all of the Crick Club's crew. And indeed, Barney Reid over on pitch two. Wonderful day for cricket today. Bahrain have scored one of the all-time great upsets. 29 places the difference in the international T20I rankings. That didn't matter. They're going through as the winners of Group A. We'll be back with you tomorrow. We'll be on air from 9.15. We'll bring you every ball. And we'll find out who the two qualifiers will be from this Asian Cricket Council, Western Region, Asia Cup qualifier. 9.15 a.m. tomorrow. We'll see you then.